Let's talk about this quarterback controversy that doesn't exist or does it. I think Uh it's funny that Shanahan has to answer the question. It's a topic on the table. Everyone's like, there is no quarterback controversy. But if you have to say that enough, it's like there is one. So what I'm asking is, it it seems like Mullen's going to play on Sunday. If he plays poorly, obviously the conversation is over. It's Jimmy's team. It always has been Jimmy's team. It won't stop being Jimmy's team. But if Mullins goes out and does it again, throws for 350, a touchdown or two, no picks, and basically looks totally in control of the offense, what happens next? Does Jimmy just take over the week after? Because it's interesting. When when Shanahan asked it, he said two things that kind of contradicted each other. He said, this is Jimmy's team, Mm -hmm. and I don't look past the next week. So it seems what he's saying is, I'm not making any grand statements, but at the same time, we'll see what happens next week. It's a week-by-week proposition. So my, I don't know who's going first, but what happens theoretically, project, if, if Mullins goes out and tears it up again next week, this Sunday? I'll go ahead and, and go. Yeah. Absolutely not. There's there's zero controversy. Uh, although Mullins had a big game, 343 and one touchdown. Hold Everyone's- on. Before you get started, before you get started, let me, let me refine my question. Not what happens. Does Mullins continue to start? Do they keep him in the starting lineup? Or if he goes two, two for two, tearing it up, do they still bench him anyway if Jimmy feels healthy next week against the, the Miami? That's my question. Yeah, you absolutely bench him because everyone gets excited for Mullins because he's like the little brother. You see your little brother go out there and throw 343, <laughs> you're going to be really excited for him. Like, dude, like you killed it. Great job. That's exactly what it is with Mullins. Because if you look at some of that tape on there, he played well. I'm not saying he didn't, but you look at that tape. Jimmy Garoppolo's in. He's a much more accurate quarterback. He probably throws for 443. He had two touchdowns to Brandon Ayuk. That <laughs> wait, look at I, I understand. He had two touchdowns to Brandon Ayuk. That I'm not arguing with you. The, you don't have to the accuracy was I'm just way off. So Jimmy Garoppolo, you absolutely go straight back to him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Grant's yeah, eyebrow raise. I know, eyebrow right? raise when he talks about him. He's like, don't you dare talk about Nick like that. No. <laughs> yeah. You that's, 100%... My, that's my little brother. <laughs> <laughs> you, you 100% stick with Jimmy Garoppolo because of so, – of, if, if it's not performance – all right, I'll, I'll take a different angle. I'll touch something else. If, if Forget about performance, but because of what you're paying him and because of what, you're, what the message you're going to send to the team. Now, the reason – even if Nick does do good, you still have to do it because you pay him. But because if you start Nick again and Jimmy is healthy, you can't go back to Jimmy. That's not a good look. It's easier if you can go back to Jimmy and Jimmy starts playing bad after a good couple of games or even a few games. And it's like, all right, this guy is like a good major cause why we're losing. Nick, hop back in there. Then that looks – not only does that look better just from a PR standpoint, we know they like to look good all the time, which is what the messages are trying to send, unless we're talking about face masks. That's why he didn't care about for against the Jets. But – that's how it's going to be, in my opinion. I think because of how much they're paying him, they think he feels like he's the best option to win, and because they just want to make it look good. So if they let Jimmy come out, and if he's the direct cause, and it look, it's easier to bench Jimmy at that point. Because otherwise, if you get if you bench if you bench Jimmy now and keep Mullins going forward, then it kind of feels like this is kind of where we're at. Unless obviously he's doing terrible, then they have to do Garoppolo, and then at that point, then it's all right. All right, now you have no idea what you're doing, and then it's just going to be more mixed messages than it needs to be. Jack, what's going to happen if Nick Mullen tears it up on Sunday? What happens? Well, what's going to happen if, if Mullen tears it up is it's really, you know, I think he's, you're really setting up a controversy. If you, you know, the quarter, you know, for Niner fans, if you look at, you know, what's been going on in just the last six months, seven months with, with fans since the Super Bowl, especially, even go back to the playoffs, if Mullen tears it up this week and they go ahead and they sit him against Miami and Garoppolo struggling, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be rough. And then you got a really rough stretch after that. So, That's right. you know, this is San Francisco. This stuff, you know, I, I lived through Montana Young. <laughs> and at this point right now, Mullins is way closer to Garoppolo than Young ever was at that point. Young was Young was not a good quarterback until about 1992, 91. He, he really struggled when he first got his chance. So, you know, uh, uh, boy, I, I right now at this point, I know I kind of I kind of was rough on, on uh, Mullins heading into the last week. I did say he'd play well. But I really don't. When I watch him on film, I don't see a whole lot of things that he's doing that Garoppolo is not, you know, able to do. Um, but, you know what I, what I mean by that is Mullins. The things that Mullins can't do um, isn't much different than what what Garoppolo can't do. 
a little bit of arm strength, but it's really not that big of a deal uh, with the way that the way that Shanahan schemes him up. Yeah, I, I totally agree with everything Jack said. To me, it seems like it's kind of out of Kyle Shanahan's hands now. It's kind of an organic thing. If Jim, if if Nick Mullins goes out there and tears it up and throws for four hundred yards or or three fifty or three hundred and just wins convincingly and has a good game, you can't bench him. It just even if you were Jimmy, it's like I, why don't you? T- my my knee, my my ankle still hurts. Give me another week. It seems it would be so much easier to to go back to Jimmy after a stinker. If if Nick comes out and plays poorly against the Eagles, then everyone's gonna want Jimmy back. But if 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 Nick tears it up again and you go back to Jimmy and as Jack says he struggles, how do you not go back to Nick? How do you afford to lose games when you have a quarterback on the bench that you know is on fire, not just good or or impressive, but currently on fire? That's that's the scenario we're throwing out there. So it seems like. Nick Mullins can control his own legacy. Sure, it's not his team, but they also take things week by week. And if he just happens to continue to throw for 300 yards a game, we'll see. I mean, it just seems like if he has another good game, we're going to hear next week from the 49ers. Jimmy's ankle still hurts. It still hurts a little bit. We're going to need one more week. We're going to need one more week. And then (laughs) what will be interesting is what they do if Mullins plays against the Dolphins and what they want to do against the Rams. Because theoretically, you want Jimmy against the Rams for a lot of reasons. He's the, he's the starter. He's your guy. He's played the Rams recently. He's experienced. Um, so I think it's interesting. You want Jimmy back for that game against the Rams, but who knows what's going to happen against the Dolphins? It's up to it's up to Nick, in my, in my opinion. It's not really up to anyone else. If you go back and you look at what happened in 2012 between Smith and, and, and uh, Kaepernick, Smith was having – He a was great at, at the top, at the best that we've ever seen him play when he got injured. He never took yes. the field again. Never saw the field again, and it was a hot hand thing. I mean, Shan- I mean, Harbaugh came out and said it, which Shanahan won't do. But it's it, it's kind of the nature of the sport. If Nick Mullins comes in and tears it up, you can't take him out. He's like a he's like a relief pitcher throwing a no no. I'm sorry, like when he starts giving up hits, I'll take you out. But for the time being, you're on the mound, buddy. So we'll see what happens. It's the hot hand theory, the as created by Jim Harbaugh. The issue is they will take him out and put Garoppolo in once he's ready. Uh, the best case for the 49ers is. Hey, Nick Mullins does ball out, and then you could throw a second round tender on him in the offseason, and now you're able to move Nick for a second round pick. Um, I, I think they they know what Jimmy has and they know what Jimmy can do. And after watching the game against the Giants, even with Mullins having a great game, there was still a lot of plays that were left on the table. And that's what Shanahan is going to see. Okay. Well, we'll see. We can't predict the future. It's an interesting thing no. to keep in mind when we watch. 